Hello, everyone, and welcome into Senior Living Live. My name is Melissa. I hope you are doing well today. As you know, it is that time of the month again. We have another Senior Living Live webinar, and today it is, of course, a very important topic. Our guest presenter is Dr. Dan Quirk. He is a physical therapist and geriatric certified specialist, and he is here today to discuss ways to prevent falls. He's got some excellent tips that will help you and your loved ones, whether they are living in a house, an apartment, a townhouse, or a senior living community. Dr. Quirk will be available for questions at the end of his presentation. And we, of course, want you to be a part of the conversation. And in order to do that, just remember all lines are muted, all video lines will be muted. So you can scroll down to the bottom of your screen where it says Q&A. Feel free to type out your question there anytime during the presentation, and I will be happy to read them to Dr. Quirk at the end of his presentation. Dr. Quirk, we are certainly looking forward to this presentation. I talked to you last week. You had some great tips then that I didn't even think about, and I know you're ready to share that with our audience today. Thank you so much for joining us. Take it away. Yes, thank you, Melissa. I'm very excited to be here. Um, and very excited and, and thank you everybody for your time. I, I, I know everybody's um, time is valuable. So I appreciate spending a little bit of time with, with myself and Melissa and the, and the Arbor team here. Um, so just to um, give a little quick introduction of myself. So I'm Dr. Dan Quirk, as Melissa said, I'm a, a doctor of physical therapy. I, I practice in, um, in Baltimore, Maryland, I work with an uh, organization called Fox Rehabilitation. So we're a, a private practice that treats all older adults. So we, we focus on working with older adults and, and helping them really live their best life and, and maximize the, um, the function that they have in their, their day to day life. So really, whatever they're trying to accomplish, we, we try to help them out with. And I'd say or near 100% of those folks have either had a fall or have um, a fear or, or, or a risk of falling. And, and that's why we're here today to, to really talk about that. And, um, you know, as Melissa said, I, I've personally went through a process to be a, a geriatric certified clinician. Um, and what that means is that, you know, as physical therapists, we're trained, um, you know, we call it as a generalist. So you, you learn all about all different age groups, all different types of therapy, but um, when you go through a specialty program, excuse me, you learn how to be a, uh, a specialist. And, and my choice was in geriatrics because, yeah, as I'll go into, I have a personal connection to helping older adults uh, uh, avoid falls. And that's what um, I'm passionate about. That's what our practice focuses on. Um, and we go out and we, we treat folks in their home and, and help them get around as, as well as they can. And um, you know, through that, <clears throat> not only do we treat in, in our patients in, in their private homes, we also work with the Arbor Company and we, we treat in their communities, which um, you know, we, we really enjoy. We, we are able to help their residents uh, function as best as they can and really you know, uh, flourish in, in the senior living uh, environment. And it will go into a little bit about um, kind of home setup and reducing falls and things like that. And you know, we couldn't say more good things about um, you know, the senior living world and all the innovations that, that Arbor and, and others have done to, to really minimize falls. And that's why we're there to help as well from a kind of a physical, occupational and, and speech therapy standpoint. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I do have a, a PowerPoint that we can follow along. So there's really, um, there's many different risk factors for falls, but what I'm going to talk about is the seven top risk factors uh, for falls as we age. Um, and just to put a little context to why this is important to me, and hopefully why it's important to many of you, whether you're, you have a loved one who's um, experiencing falls or, or you're just interested. Um, so this picture is not really a picture of my grandmother's, but the names are, and, and their names are Alice and Arlene. And unfortunately, neither of them are, are with us at, at this moment. But, you know, one thing that has driven me to do the work that I do is both of them experienced falls within the last year or two of their life. And, um, you know, I, you know, now that I know what I know, I, I know that those falls really led to them um, having a, a decline in function that otherwise would have would have taken a lot more time. So, you know, my passion for helping older adults reduce their risk of falling is, is really about these two and about, um, you know, all of those people out there with with grandparents, with parents that 
are experiencing uh, risk of falling and, and maybe already have had a fall. And, and we'll talk about a little bit here <clears throat> how that accelerates the aging process. And, and um, you know, of course, we can't prevent all of uh, the falls. They, they, do, they do happen. But what we can do is make sure we're, we're strong and we're, we're balanced. And, and I'll go through all of those sort of ideas and, and thoughts um, to make sure, you know, we can prevent as many as possible. And it shows, really, research shows we can prevent about 60% of falls with, with doing the right thing. Um, you know, and then if we're going to fall, we might as well be as strong as possible because, you know, that way you can get back up and you don't have injuries, right? Because both of my grandmothers here, Alice and Arlene, um, they, they had injuries when they fell, and that's really what accelerated the, the aging process for them. So um, just wanted to put a little context to that. So as we continue, so this is, uh, we call it the FOX mission possible. This is our mission statement. And, you know, I'll just really highlight the first sentence. Um, so our mission is to re rehabilitate lives by believing in the strength of people. Um, you know, and that's one thing when I went through the geriatric certified specialty program is, you know, you learn, of course, about different therapies and so forth, but <clears throat> one big thing that you, we learned is that there's so much more potential in older adults than we maybe ever thought. Um, you know, our average patient is 83 years old. So, you know, when you're growing up or even going through school, sometimes, you know, the, that population is written off as, oh, well, you're just too old to do X, Y, or Z. And, and our mission is really to say um, that that's not acceptable and, and to, to help people to the best of our ability achieve what they thought was impossible. Um, and that's why I really love what we do. I love working with the Arbor Company and, and their, their residents because um, you know, we really strive to, to help people maximize their, their quality of life. And that's, that's a really special thing. So what we're gonna focus on today as we talk is, is really three, three pieces. Um, so the first is to, to kind of frame the problem. So why are we here? Why are we talking about falls? I, I shared my personal experience, but you know, I wanted to just talk about some statistics that you know, kind of show how big of a problem falls are for the older adult population. Um, we'll, we'll talk real briefly about what the different risk factors are that, that we should be keeping an eye out for, but I hope to focus most of our time uh, on action, right? What can we do? What can you all do? What can everybody involved in this conversation do to help prevent falls? And that's really um, what we hope to give to each and every one of you today. So the first is the problem. So just to put a little scope around it, why, why are we speaking about falls today? What, what is it about falls that makes it such a big issue? So um, you remember these two, of course, you just saw them. That's Alice and Arlene. Well, they're both over 80 years old in this picture. And, you know, statistics show that at least one of them will have a fall within uh, each calendar year. So older adults over the age of 65, 30% fall every year. But once people pass 80 years old, um, one half or 50% fall every single year. So you know, that kind of shows us that this isn't just a, a, something that happens infrequently. This, this happens a lot, and, and especially as older adults age over 80 years old. And you know, our goal is to help people live long lives, but also to live better longer. That's one thing we, we talk about a lot is um, we don't just want to ex extend people's life past 80, past 90, past 100. We want to help them maximize their, their, their life within those years, right? Um, and that's one thing we, we talk about. And, you know, one thing I wanted to really uh, nail down or, or really drive home for this group is, you know, we think often, um, and this is what I thought before I learned more about it, that, that falls are just normal with aging, right? How many times have we all heard, oh, well, you're just getting older. You can't, you know, you can't do what you used to do. Or, oh, you had a fall, you must just be getting older, just be, be safe, that sort of thing. Um, and it's important to realize that although falls happen more often as we age, they're not normal. And that's a, that's a big difference. Um, they're very similar to anything, you know, to diabetes, to heart disease, to a stroke or, or dementia, that, that things that um, are pathological, they, they are a, an issue that people experience, but it's not just something we need to accept without any treatment, right? Just so just like we would take medication for uh, diabetes, we can use a lot of the, the strategies we're gonna talk about today to prevent falls. And I, I wanted everybody to know that, that whether you've experienced a fall or a loved one has experienced a fall, or even if you're just here to learn because you're, you're looking into your later years and you wanna be prepared, um, falling is 
common, it's not normal, right? So we need to make sure we're doing everything we can to prevent. So this is just some more statistics, um, you know, and, and one of the reasons why, oh, well, fall, you know, if, if we're a little younger, we fall down, we get right back up. No problem, right? But, you know, as we age, sometimes these things have a big effect. And, and you know, this shows that uh, up to or about 40% of hospital hospitalizations are due to falls in the older adult population. <clears throat> so 40% of older adults that go to the hospital, uh, the reason they're going to the hospital is because of a fall. And the average length of stay, right, the, the average number of days they stay in the hospital is 12 days. So some are out sooner, some actually stay longer. Um, and, you know, and that can, you can lose up to 60% of your muscle within those 12 days. Um, we all know if any of us have been in the hospital, um, you don't move around much, right? You spend a lot of time in bed in order to stay safe. And that's the reason you're there. But if we could keep people out of the hospital, keep them from falling, um, and more importantly, get them stronger so they don't lose all this muscle, that's, that's really what we're out there to do. Uh, and this is just a graphic. And I'll, I'll uh, frame this for you guys. This is the, the thigh muscle, right? A leg muscle <clears throat> of two different people. Um, the top picture is a 70 year old who's maintained their muscle mass. So they are actually a, a triathlete. So they, they maintained exercise, they maintained strength. The bottom picture is someone who is more sedentary, but is also 70 years old. Um, so just so you know what you're looking at, the, the darker color is muscle and the lighter color is um, kind of just fat and skin and bone. So of course we wanna keep our muscles as big and strong as, as possible. So you can see here, two people who have lived the exact same time, one of which who kept their strength and one which didn't, um, you can see how much more muscle mass that there really is. Um, so, you know, it's just kind of a, a, a graphic that I like pulling up to not only show what muscle loss actually looks like, but also to let people know that if we continue to move, we continue to exercise, as we'll talk about, um, you can keep your muscle, you can keep your strength. You know, there's a 70 year old here on this picture, um, the, the top one that, that was running triathletes or, or, you know, biking and swimming and running. So um, it is possible. And, you know, of course, we all are approaching this from different stages in life. So, um, you know, but the, the point is everybody can improve from where they are now, uh, myself included. You know, everybody can be stronger. Everybody can be um, more healthy. And, and that's really what we're here to, to, to give you tools in order to approach that. So this is just an interesting graphic. You know, we talk a lot at, at Fox, the organization I, I, uh, I practice with about the slippery slope of, of aging. So, you know, after we're 75 years old, you know, we, we, it's, it's harder to bounce back, we'll say that. So you're four to five more times likely to lose your independence if you have a fall than if you are, you know, 30, 40 years old, right? So you can see here on the left-hand side, um, if you're looking at your screen, is 100%, you know, when you're 20 years old, you're at your, your peak function. And over time, that, that tends to decrease. So. You know, what, what we encourage folks to do, um, of course, this graph is not inevitable. So when you're in the fun or the function stage, you should be doing things to keep yourself healthy. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about today, because it is harder as we age when we're already in frailty. And um, I don't like the word failure, but when, when we're kind of less functional, it is, it is harder to improve. So, um, you know, we want to make sure people are doing things early and, and, and getting ahead of this stuff. So I, I hope as we reach this audience that we're able to, you know, impact some folks to, to do just that. So the next question or the next section of the, the conversation uh, will really be around risk factors. So this will be, this will be pretty quick because like I said, I want to pivot um, pretty quickly to the action. What can we do about it? Because just knowing there's a problem really doesn't tell you much. It's, it's what can we do about it to, to make it better? So, um, <clears throat> so the seven risk factors, and we're really gonna take this one by one. Um, and this is not in any um, order of importance or anything like that. It's just the order we have it here. So, um, so if, number one is fear of falling. Two is leg strength. Um, that one seems pretty obvious, but as a physical therapist, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention strength. Um, number three is inner ear functions. We'll talk more about what that means. Number four is vision. Number five is proprioception. Long word, but it's pretty simple once we talk about it. Six is our medications, and number seven is our environment, or really our home safety. So whether you live in a house, an apartment, or a senior living community, um, there's still things you can always do to, to improve your home safety. So, um, so like I said, we're going to shift pretty quickly to action and go through each one of those. 
Uh, and this is just an interesting pause here, a quote, um, <clears throat> a, a guy named Henry Ford, someone who um, has, has, has done some great things for this, this country, for this world. He said, uh, vision without execution is just hallucination, right? So like I said, if we just know there's a problem and we know the risk factors, what are we really doing about it Be, unless we take action? So uh, that's what we're going to talk about now. So number one, as you remember, is fear of falling. So what does that mean? It, it basically just means, um, you know, whether you thought about it once or a hundred times, just, or, or if you've fallen or if you've not fallen, fear of falling is just, you know, that the fear that we're going to fall and injure ourselves, it really um, in itself is not a problem, but what it leads to is the problem. And it, it just leads to decreased mobility. So if you are scared to walk to the bathroom, um, you're going to do it less often, right? Or walk, that's a bad example, because I guess we have to go to the bathroom. But if we're scared to walk, you know, outside to walk around the block, um, if there's fear involved, we're not going to do it as often. That's just human nature. So, you know, what that leads to is decreased physical activity, which leads to decreased strength, endurance, flexibility, all those sort of things. Um, you know, and the solution is, is, is simple, but not easy. And we'll say that a lot, that, you know, the, these solutions are not they're not easy, they take work, but they are relatively simple. Um, and the solution here is, you know, just challenging yourself, trying it out, um, challenging yourself in a controlled environment where you're, you're safe. So really respecting the fear, um, but we can't let it control your life because that's gonna lead, you know, it's, it's kind of a catch 22. Um, you know, we're fearful of falling, so then we move less, so then, you know, we fall more and, and it's only gonna perpetuate itself. So. Um, you know, I'll say a few times during this that, of course, I'm a physical therapist. <clears throat> um, you know, my organization does therapy all day, every day. So, of course, I'm going to advocate that you see a professional about a lot of these things. But one, you know, when we talk about a controlled environment, what does that mean? It, it means seeing a physical therapist, occupational therapist, um, or uh, even a, a fitness professional if you're in pretty good shape and you just want to learn a little bit more. A lot of this is, it will take some help because you know, if it was easy to do on our own, um, we wouldn't really need to have this talk, right? So that's a lot of this, we'll take a little bit of help and we'll talk a little later when we get to the Q&A, um, of course, specifically about Fox and, and where we're located and, and how to reach us. But, you know, I'm first off a, a physical therapist and, and that's, you know, they're in all 50 states. So, you know, I really advocate people here on this call as we talk through this stuff, if you're having questions, if you don't feel comfortable, if, if you don't you know, know what any of this means, of course, we'll have a question and answer, but your, your best bet is really to have a professional um, come out, take a look. Maybe you go to them or in a clinic or they come to you in your home, but I, I'd really advocate for that. So um, number two here, leg strength. So how, how strong our legs are. So we showed a few minutes ago um, a picture of really what, what a decrease in leg strength looks like, and that was in an MRI. But of course, what it means functionally is, you know, as you lose your leg strength, it's harder to stand up. It's harder to walk. We end up walking slower, which it's in its own right is a, a risk factor for falling because, you know, we, as we grew up, learned how to walk in a certain way. And when we change the speed, when we change the cadence, when we change our ability to, to walk because of leg strength, it really, you know, it can do a number on us. So um, you know, this is a quick statistic. So <clears throat> if you do nothing, right, if you don't strength train, if you don't work on your strength, older adults can lose up to 5% of muscle mass uh, or strength every year, or sorry, excuse me, every decade after 30 years old. So, um, you know, as you become 40 years old and 50 and 60, you can lose 5% of your muscle every year. So, you know, by the time you go to 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, you, you know, potentially lost 20% of your strength. So um, that may not sound like much, but that's going to make a significant difference in the way you, you get around, right? Um, and that's for all of us. I mean, I'm myself, uh, I'm 34, so I, I'm on the, on the path. If I don't do something about it, my strength's going to start to decrease uh, decade over decade. And, you know, I personally don't want that. And uh, luckily enough, I'm, I'm educated in how to strength train. So, you know, I, I'll do my best to, to, to uh, counteract that. But if you're not, again, that's what I was talking about, you know, talk to a therapist, talk to a, um, a professional in the fitness industry, and they'll, they'll teach you how to do these sort of things. But, you know, the solution is really, um, again, simple, 
but not easy. Three times a week, moderate intensity, full body strength training. So of course we're talking about leg strength, but really it's your full body. And, um, you know, three times a week is, is uh, I'd say a minimum. You know, we'd recommend more, but we're just trying to get people to, to do at least the minimum. Um, <clears throat> you know, and moderate intensity, what, what does that mean, right? Um, it, that doesn't mean, now for some of us it might, but it doesn't mean that one pound pink dumbbells, right, that we see in the jazzercise uh, group sitting down, kind of easy, um, but we feel like we're doing something. Well, unfortunately, that's not going to move the needle on maintaining your strength. We're talking about the uh, exercise that, that pushes you physically, you know, makes you sweat a little, makes your muscles sore. That's a totally normal thing. And, and I want to make sure everybody feels good that if you do exercise that the day after and two days after kind of makes your muscles sore, that's okay. That mean, almost means you're doing the right thing. Of course, if you're having significant pain, um, talk to your doctor, talk to your therapist, those sort of things. But um, you know, we want to be challenging our muscles enough to get them stronger and stronger um, over time. So that's kind of what we're talking about with moderate intensity. And that's, I think, in this, the most important piece when we talk about strength and, and even balance training is, yeah, we could do three times a week. We could spend an hour doing, quote, strength training. But if the intensity is not high enough, um, you're really wasting your time. And, uh, you know, sorry to be harsh, but or, or brash, but, you know, if we're just doing very light exercise, of course, it's better than nothing. I won't say that. But if we're not challenging ourselves, if we're not getting a little sweaty, a little out of breath, um, we're not really moving the needle as far as strength and, and those sort of things. So leg strength, obviously, something I feel very uh, passionate about as a therapist. So um, I hope I hope you can tell. <laughs> but um, yeah, and, and oh, back to this. So I was just looking at my notes. When we look at, I, I, I use the examples moderate is, you know, you're, you're, you're breaking a small sweat. You're not, you're not sweating bullets, but you're kind of breaking a sweat. You're maybe a little out of breath, but when we're talking about strength training, it's, you know, something that's a, a five or a six out of 10, right? That's an easy thing for us to understand. Well, it's not as hard as you could possibly go, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's not really light exercise, maybe just walking, things like that. So you want to, you want to hit that five, six out of 10. And, and if you're doing that, that's, that's what we call moderate strength training. So um, inner ear function, right? So what does that mean? When we're talking about ears, of course, um, you know, we have the ears we can, we can physically see, but inside of our, our kind of ear canal, there's a lot of, um, a lot of things that have to do with our balance, which is interesting. It's something I don't think I quite knew until I got into healthcare is that there's organs in our ear that help with our balance. So if you've ever had, um, maybe you, you turn your head as you're walking or you, you, you nod your head down as you're walking or look up at the ceiling and you get a little dizzy, um, that might mean you have an issue with your inner ear um, or your, what you might hear is a uh, phrase as the, your vestibular system. So <clears throat> what that means, you know, that's something that um, can be helped and can be fixed. You know, there's a lot of things we can do. Um, it's, it's very complex the way that your inner ear works. So really for this audience, for this conversation, um, you know, the, the message is if you're having dizziness, if you're walking down the street, you know, and you turn your head to look at, um, you know, a, a pretty tree or your neighbor's house or what, you know, whatever it might be, if you turn your head back and get a little dizzy, that might mean you have issues with your, your inner ear. Um, it might be the same if, you know, if you stand up and you look up at the ceiling and that kind of throws you through a loop, um, you might have some issues. And, you know, it's not just if you're getting dizzy, it, it, it has a lot to do with your balance. So, you know, we can do physical therapy, there's exercises, there's techniques that we can do to help your inner ear. Um, but really, this is one thing, if you're getting dizzy, there's a lot of things that can cause that. Of course, inner ear function is just one of many. So you want to talk to your physician, um, your medical doctor, um, primarily first to figure out what's going on because it could be a medication, it could be a blood pressure issue, it could be um, a lot of different things. But one of them might be inner ear function. And if you find out that's what's going on, you know, that's something physical therapy can absolutely help with. So, you know, this is something, you know, the strength training, <clears throat> if you're relatively healthy, you could probably just go to a gym or work with a trainer, those sort of things. Things like inner ear function, you're going to want to speak to someone, um, you know, who, who's trained in, in you know, physical therapy, talk to a physician or a therapist, those sort of things, because it can get a little complex the way we, the way we help with that. So 
And then there's, there's a few different um, balance systems that we're going to talk about. So one was the inner ear. Number two is vision. And in a little while, we're going to talk about proprioception or really your balance um, to, to use a less, uh, not such a long word, but you know, the middle one there is vision. So it's something that, you know, when I was uh, preparing and talking to Melissa, you know, I brought up a lot about home setup and lighting and different things and, you know, things we don't think about when we think about um, falls and balance and, and that sort of thing. So, you know, your vision plays a huge role in, um, you know, your, in your balance. I, I, I challenge everybody just to kind of think in their head a day that they woke up um, maybe in the middle of the night and all the lights are out. Maybe you have some great blackout curtains and it's pitch black. Uh, how great was your gate when you were walking to the bathroom? I, I venture a guess because myself personally, when I wake up, I'm taking tippy toes, really small steps, walking really slow because I don't know where I am. I don't know where, where I'm going. So, you know, the, the same thing applies with vision, even when it's not dark. If we have troubles with our vision, we're going to have troubles with our balance and our walking. You know, and, and it is normal after the age of 40, of course, to have issues with our, our vision. You know, it's going to decline over time. Um, there's really nothing we can do about that. I, I, I would love to have a solution uh, for aging and, and vision. But unfortunately, um, I think if I did, I'd, I'd probably be a millionaire. <laughs> you know, I, no one's really solved how to, how to slow decline vision. But, you know, we have figured out things we can do. And, and that's really out of my realm as far as things you can do. But, you know, a couple of things we can do is, is make sure, of course, we're going to our optometrist yearly. You know, if you have a prescription for contact lenses or, or glasses that, you know, you get that adjusted every year because things change. You know, the other thing we can do is um, we'll consult with an occupational therapist. So myself personally, I'm a physical therapist, but I work with a lot of OTs and, and there's a lot out there that have even a specialization in low vision environments. And, and they're just the experts in figuring out, okay, well, your vision is X, Y, or Z. Maybe you have cataracts or glaucoma or macular degeneration, all, all very common things. Well, we can't change that necessarily, but what we can do is set up your environment to make sure you function as safely as possible. So, you know, I have written on here, you know, make sure you go to your optometrist, but if you're having troubles with your vision, um, talk to your doctor about a referral for occupational therapy because those, those guys and gals are really experts in, in helping with that. So, um, and the last piece, or we have a few more, but the last piece of the balance side of things is so proprioception, right? Kind of a, a funky word, but really it just means balance and, and, and our ability to know where our, our joints, our, our, our limbs, our muscles are in space, right? So it does decrease with age. And when we have things like diabetes, um, or neurological conditions like Parkinson's or stroke, all sorts of things. Our ability to balance or have good proprioception uh, decreases. So what can we do about that? <clears throat> um, this is another thing, of course, you know, I'm bringing it back to the moderate intensity. Um, and really per year, you wanna achieve 50 hours of moderately challenging balance exercises. They've done some studies to see, okay, well, What's the right dosage, right? When we, when we take a medication, we know exactly what dosage we should be taking. Well, the same applies to, to exercise um, and, and particularly balance exercise. So if you just do a little, actually research shows, you know, you might actually get moving just enough to fall more, quite honestly, um, if you just do maybe 10, 15, 20 hours. But really, we want to we wanna, uh, do enough balance exercises um, really to, to lower our risk of falling, of course. So 50 hours is kind of the magic number. Um, of course, that's over the span of, of, of a year. So it's, you know, uh, a few hours a week. So, you know, I know we're piling it on as far as, oh, well, we need to strength exercise three days a week. And now we need to do balance exercises. But it is vitally important to maintaining our health and our safety and our lowering our risk of falling. Um, you know, and, and, Moderate intensity here is a little different than strength training. Um, you might not be sweating. You might not be short of breath. Your muscles might not be sore, but it's something that is challenging enough that you kind of sort of feel like you're losing your balance, but then you catch it. So that's what moderate intensity. So you should be, you know, doing an exercise that's a little bit wobbly. Um, and that's really what's going to improve your balance because <clears throat> if you don't push yourself to that level, it's, it's really not going to help quite honestly. So you want to be pushing yourself until you're a little wobbly 
and again, this is, I, I've said it a, a few times, but you know, of course that's scary, right? We talked about fear of falling. It's scary to push your balance to that level, but that's why, you know, we're here, physical therapists, occupational therapists, um, you know, fitness professionals are here to help, right? To show you the right way to do it. You know, I work with folks in their home and of course we have to set it up where you can challenge your balance with your exercises, but you don't challenge it so much, of course, that you fall. And, you know, we can use different, I use a lot the corner of a room, right? Where with your back up against it, if you lose your balance, a lot of times you just, you catch yourself. Or you use a countertop where you're not quite holding on, but if you lose your balance, you can grab quickly. Um, so those sort of things are something you might not think of, but are certainly things that uh, a therapist can, can show you in your own home, so. So, the next, next risk factor is medications, right? Um, <clears throat> something a lot of us deal with is, is medications. Well, research has shown that if you are taking more than four medications a day, it actually doubles your risk of falling. Um, I, I, that's kind of crazy for me to think about. But you know, as we learned through school, the uh, impacts, of course, we learned about the strength and the balance and so forth. But medications is a huge piece of falling. Now, Disclaimer, we should not stop taking our medications. Um, we should just talk to our physician or our healthcare provider about um, and making sure they're all necessary. So things that um, maybe we're having trouble sleeping and we take a medication or we're having some anxiety or depression and we take medication or even, excuse me, a blood pressure medication can, can cause a risk of falling. And, and these are things you might not think of, but these medications really change the way your brain functions, they change the way your body functions, and they can actually lead to an increased risk of falling. So, you know, the solution here is really to talk to your physician, talk to your pharmacist. Um, you can take your medications to every, every visit you go to when you go to your physician. You should bring all your medications and really look at down the list. I know they don't spend a lot of time with you necessarily, but you should look down the list and at, make sure every single one is, is absolutely vital that, um, and if they can ever take one away or they can ever change one, if you're having trouble with your balance or dizziness or those sort of things, um, you should absolutely talk to them about that because you know it's something that could really help your risk of falling. So the last one, and, and certainly not last because of importance, just last because of the way it, it falls on the presentation is your environment, right? Or your home safety. Of course, you know, we're here, we're, this is co-sponsored uh, by ourselves as therapists, but also with the Arbor Company. So we understand, um, you know, the best case scenario, right, is to live in an environment like a senior living community like Arbor um, so, so elegantly provides that, that is very controlled and everything is well lit and all the surfaces are really even, right? And there's, there's not um, uneven stairs or, or a rickety, uh, you know, a grab bar or, or a railing that you, you grab onto, those sort of things. But, you know, also a lot of us are living in at home and maybe we've been in the same home for 30, 40, 50 years. Maybe, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of value to us staying at home. Or even if we're in a senior living community, there's still things we can do. So the, the risk factor is really things like lighting is to me the biggest one. Um, you know, like I said before, if you wake up in the middle of the night, you try to walk to the bathroom without any lights on, um, good luck not losing your balance. Or, you know, if you walk full speed ahead, you're probably going to run into something, right? So, of course, lighting is such a huge thing. So, um, also, of course, clutter, you know, if, you're, if you have things you're going to trip over, naturally, that would lead to, to more falls. Um, and it's just lack of things like grab bars or even uneven flooring that are the greatest fall risk hazards. Um, and that, you know, of course, with uneven flooring, you know, we're, we're talking about your throw rugs and your changes in surface and things like that. So, you know, I'm not here to, uh, to tell everybody to get rid of all of their throw rugs, but, you know, they, they are a, a challenge and we can lose our balance when we go from one service to another, especially if it's, um, if it's a, a, you know, raising up or, or coming down. So, you know, again, solution here, um, other than just maybe looking up online how to make your environment more safe, you know, again, I'll plug our, our occupational therapists, both at Fox and just otherwise that, you know, they're really great at looking at the whole picture, right? They come into your home, they look around, they spend time in order to make sure your environment is as safe as possible. 
And then they can make recommendations on what you may want to change. Or maybe you should have somebody come in and install that grab bar right in the right place. Or um, you should change a, a throw rug that might be uh, giving you particular problems. And, you know, I think this stuff sometimes is, is simple, but, you know, talking to Melissa and prepping, she, you know, there was almost a light bulb that, oh, wow, lighting actually makes a difference with balance and falls. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's not easy to, it's not natural to understand that this stuff really has an impact. So, um, so yes, look up a local occupational therapist. Of course, we'll talk a little again about where Fox is and, and we have great OTs that can help out, but um, you know, I'd recommend that, that home safety evaluation. So, so as we, as we approach a close here, and of course we're going to open it up to questions and answers. Um, I, I bring back up our friends, Alice and Arlene, right? These are um, personally my two grandmothers, but you know, really we're talking about older adults in general. And, um, you know, my, my mission, my goal in my life is to help as many older adults as possible. I would love to serve over a million in my lifetime. And that's really what I'm out here to do. Um, and I'm hoping, you know, this conversation at least helps a few folks that are out there curious about falls or have had issues with falls and really those sort of things, because, um, and this is somewhat in jest, but yeah, this is what we want, right? So we want Allison and Arlene after therapy and after working with Fox, of course, they're going to be in this, this great shape. But um, joking aside, you know, it's so important as we age that, you know, we really pay attention to these things because, um, like I said earlier, falls, um, they are more common. They are certainly not normal. And, and they, can, they can accelerate the aging process. And, and I think all of us on this call, whether we're, um, you know, 30 years old or, or 100 years old, we would love to live our best lives in the years we have here. Um, so, you know, I hope you all got some value from the conversation today. I hope there's some walkaways that you can you can really um, you know start to implement right away. Um, but we're going to talk a little about yeah where you can find us. We you know and that's the one thing I I would recommend after all this just to kind of close my thoughts is uh, seek help. This stuff is not easy to figure out on your own. So whether you talk to your physician or your nurse practitioner, healthcare provider, um, a therapist, even a fitness professional, just seek help to to kind of help you navigate this stuff because. Um, you know, it's really important. So it, it should, you should spend time figuring out the best way uh, for yourself personally. So, and of course, if you have questions, please, I'm, I'm here to, to help answer them. Great job, Dr. Quirk. Uh, you, you might need a little bit more water after that. <laughs> you, just, <laughs> you, you really gave us um, a lot of food for thought, certainly. Um, and we, we have a question that comes in, and, and this is one that I think is really important because you touched on the different places that, that we all live, apartments, homes, senior living communities. And one of the reasons people move to a senior living community is um, the ease of everything from, uh, as you mentioned, the hallways, the lighting, everything is set up specifically for people who uh, are seniors. Yeah. Um, I personally live in a home that has multiple levels and Faith has a question here and I feel you Faith because I have told my husband we when we retire we are not living in a home with three levels and two sets of stairs I just think that that that's not okay I, I don't know if that's something that if I'm 60 or 70 years old that that would be safe for me or my husband and her question falls along these lines. So for you, Dr. Quirk, she asks, how can I help my parents and their neighbors, um, their age range is between 72 and 88, prepare to move out of their four level, six bedroom homes. They have themselves convinced that they don't want to live in senior facilities because that's quote for old people. We yeah. hear that a lot. You're in and out of multiple senior living communities. Sure. How can you help her out here? It's a great question. And, and yeah, I hear that all the time. Oh, you know, of course we treat patients in their home. So our ultimate goal is to, you know, keep them safe in their home. But sometimes it's just time to, to look into other options, whether that's a different home, potentially. Uh, my parents personally moved into a, um, you know, what they call a 55 and over community, right? Where it's all first floor living. So there's options like that. But, you know, if you're really, um, you know, I think we said in the 70 plus age group, you know, looking into senior living is 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 great. And quite honestly, I mean, we treat a lot of folks in senior living and um, it's very rare that I personally treat someone that I say, well, 
you, you moved into senior living at the right time. You were proactive enough. A lot of times people wait until something bad happens, whether that's a fall or an injury or, you know, maybe a pneumonia and a hospitalization or so forth. And then they can't go home. They just can't do it. So they move in. Right. And of course we help them and they, they, they might thrive and it might be perfect, but um, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, it, they waited too long because if you move in or you look into that option, at least proactively, you know, a lot of times you can set that environment up to, to age in place, right? Something we all talk about often. Um, so if you're looking, even, you know, you're 50, 60, 70 years old and you're looking into it um, or you're guiding others, right? Like, like the, the, um, the question was, I would encourage people just to start looking earlier, sooner rather than later, because, you know, what all these things we talked about, I mean, I could go to the list of, um, you know, leg strength. Well, guess what? We do exercise classes led by either exercise physiologists or a physical or occupational therapist in all of the armor communities that we work with. So, you know, you're not getting the pink dumbbell jazzercise, you're getting good, high quality, moderate intensity strength training. Um, and it goes down the list, of course, the environment and home safety, you know, you can, you can check most of those boxes off by living in a, a community that already has thought out these sort of things. And, you know, I, I said, when we were preparing, Melissa, you know, just as a therapist, I see things in senior living, Arbor specifically, that um, are just so well thought out, you know, that we, something I never thought of um, is, you know, to walk into a bathroom, right? You would think, oh, normal door, you just open it up. Well, what if you have a walker? That's, that's hard to do, right? So, you know, a lot of senior living communities do the, the kind of, I guess, barn style, the sliding doors, right? And it makes it so much easier. So, you know, there's little things like that, that I think I would encourage people to talk to their loved ones or their parents or neighbors, things like that, just about the, um, the things that, that go on in senior living. And, and it, it's a place, you know, and we work with Arbor and others to just make sure people don't feel like you're just, you're just going there to be safe and to kind of, you know, live out your, your life. You're, you're going there to thrive. I mean, the ideal scenario should be you move into senior living to have a better quality of life and you are more active than you were previously. So um, it's certainly not a, you know, the, the way that senior livings are, are developed and designed and, and, and operated today. Gosh, it's, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, some, some of these newer buildings are, are, are I think, nicer than my house. So um, it is a place that, you know, I think per people's perception is way off. So at least go in, take a look, walk around. Um, if you're near an arbor, heck, go to one of our exercise classes, meet our therapist while you're there. Like you, you, you'll see everything that, you know, they have to offer. And, and I would just encourage people, just get them out there, whether it's for an event or just a tour, things like that. Because uh, I think people's perception is, is a few years dated of what senior living looks like. And it's, it's vastly different and better these days. So. Yeah, and you, you hit the nail on the head, head there. I think a lot of people have in their mind what they think it, it's supposed to be about or what it looks like. And then you walk yeah. into these places and, and it's just, it's you don't want to leave. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Yeah. And everything's provided for you. Everything is literally right there, built in, ready to go. Um, and uh, as you mentioned, you can do as much as you want. You can do as little as you want, but everything is at your fingertips um, from your staff, uh, the exercise classes to keep you going. All of that is available uh, anytime you want it. Um, yeah, I think, you know, at least myself, even going through school, I didn't quite understand what assisted living was versus skilled nursing facilities and, and nursing homes. And I kind of thought it was all the same. And then I got into this industry and learned, oh, well, skilled nursing is very important for those people that are, are ill or, or acutely recovering but assisted living is a whole different ballgame. These places, I mean, it, it's, it's, I've, I've, I've been to vacations that the hotel is not as nice as some of these senior living, assisted living communities. So it is a, it's a different ballgame. Yeah, well, that was a great answer. Very detailed. And Faith, we hope that that helps give you a little bit more insight um, and maybe something to take back to your, your, uh, your parents and their uh, friends as well. Um, we have another question here. It is, what are the best suggestions for older seniors who already had, have significantly uh, diminished strength? What should they focus on to prevent a bad fall? And, and I would add that with a secondary part too. And that is, um, if somebody has been sort of sedentary the last couple of decades, mm -hmm. it seems really daunting to just get started on this, knowing that it could help you. Yeah. How do you get people to take that first step? 
That's a great question. And, and, you know, to your point, it's really that first step. It's just getting started. So, you know, when I talked about uh, both balance and strength exercise, but it, it, it's, it, it really is moderate intensity. And that might sound a little daunting, but that's everybody's moderate intensity is a little bit different where, you know, I personally might have to put a couple hundred pounds on a weight rack to, to make it moderate intensity, whatever, you know, maybe that's just the stage of life I am, but standing up from a chair might be moderate intensity for you in your stage of life, or even sitting in a, a chair, if you can't stand up and, um, you know, moving your legs in certain ways might be moderate intensity. So as long as it seems again, like a five or six out of 10, or it, it gives you a little bit of a, a burn in your muscles, it gives you a little bit of a sweat, a little bit of a shortness of breath, whether that's running, running or sprinting, or that's just standing up from a chair, it's all helping. So, you know, moderate intensity, I, 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 I'll repeat myself, but it's all personal. It all depends on where you start. But the most important piece is just starting, you know, just starting to move. And, and gosh, you know, I, I could, I can feel for it because I've seen many, many patients who for years haven't, haven't moved in any intentional way as far as exercise goes. Um, and I'm glad they called me or their physician referred because, you know, you need help to start. So it's not easy to do on your own. So, you know, again, I would, I would really recommend, um, you know, talking to a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, your physician about helping out because, um, of course, Fox, we're in, you know, we're in 21 states in the District of Columbia. So we're, we're you know, we're pretty uh, wide, wide ranging. But again, there is a physical therapist in all 50 states. So no matter where you're calling in from, there's somebody that can help. And most likely they can come out to your home to help. So it really decreases those barriers to getting started. So, um, you know, I would encourage everybody tomorrow, call your physician, say, hey, I want to I want a therapist to come to my house to help me. And, and most likely they know somebody that can come help. They may just not have thought about it at your last wellness check because you know, they might have 15 minutes and they looked at your med they're, they're worried about your medical stuff and maybe they didn't think about your home safety, you know, and, and I don't blame them for that, but that's why we're here as therapists to, to come in and take a look and really spend the time to understand what your fall risk uh, profile looks like and what we can do to help. And, and maybe on a, uh a question for you personally, um, what was maybe, I wouldn't say the worst case, but somebody who came in who saw this as very daunting. It was um, difficult for them to get started. They hadn't been working out or exercising in a very long time. Uh, they, were, they were in maybe that senior category and they came to Fox or to you specifically for help and got that help and within a year or two um, were doing things they couldn't do when they first arrived. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, we have countless success stories of, of uh, people that have have really thrived with what we offer. And, you know, one that comes to mind, a, a patient I've treated years ago where, you know, she she lived in um, kind of like an in-law suite of her son's house, right? And, you know, she was there for years and she just kind of just, and it, it happens slowly. You don't really notice it. You just stop moving. All of a sudden she stopped you know, she had grandchildren in the house, right? But it was 10 stairs to go from her in-law suite, um, you know, to the, to the main house, which we might all question the design of that in-law suite, of course, because why would you add stairs to that sort of situation? But nevertheless, she, that was her, her setup and she loved her grandchildren and, you know, they weren't old enough to walk down the stairs or independent enough to come to visit her. So it was very reliant on, you know, she lived 10 feet away from them, but she had to go outside. It was very hard to, for them to connect. And, you know, we the fast forward to the end and we had her walking up those 10 steps independently to see her grandchildren. It took months on end, but, you know, the start was, okay, can you stand up without using your arms from a chair? And she couldn't. So I, you know, we raised her seat up to the point of, well, she was almost standing and we were just working the leg muscles just little by little. And then we took a, took a pillow away and took a pillow away and slowly but surely, you know, and we did other things, of course, but she got that leg strength and then, okay, time to go work one stair. Let's just go up one, you know, and then it takes a week or two. And next thing you know, you're going up two and three and four and, and, um, you know, and then I'm assisting less. So it's, it, it is really a, incremental thing it, it you know we don't we don't lose our strength in a day 
and we can't regain it in a day, right? Um, you know, I use the analogy of, you know, any of us that have gone through maybe a weight gain or, or things like, well, you didn't gain it in a day, so you can't lose it in a day. Same goes with strength or function or balance. You know, it didn't deteriorate in a, in a day or a week. So it's going to take a while to get it back, but it is, it is so worth it for, um, you know, that example and, and other examples that we all have. So. Yeah, that is a great example. Thank you for sharing that. And it just goes to show that the human body is, is it's, it's pretty special. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's, yeah. um, it's pretty amazing what we're able to do even uh, over the decades and um, that it's never too late to start. Uh, I, a question that I have, and we, you sort of touched on this, um, just the, some of the little things like lighting, you know, maybe uh, as you said, there was a maybe a rickety handrail. You might want to get rid of that. Just certain things you can go and just pinpoint in your home currently, whatever living situation you're in right now to determine, is this safe? Is this something that could hinder me or, or create a, a bad situation that leads to a fall? Yeah. Why is it that we seem to hear more falls happen in the bathroom, in the shower? Is it because of the steps or the things that, that, that need to be done in that particular room? And what are some things people can do right now or, or uh, prepare for in the future to their yeah. bathrooms to, to prevent that from happening? Good question. So bathroom specific or challenging, um, one of the biggest reasons is just the, the slippery nature of you know, yeah. the thing we do in, in the bath and shower. So that, that has a huge impact. And of course, then we're not we're not wearing shoes, right? So it's really not always easy, but you know, walking across an even floor with really nicely fit fitting shoes, you know, is our best case scenario. Well, go to a slippery floor where we don't have any shoes on, and you know, we're focused on something else, and you know, it's it's um, it's very very challenging. So, you know, recommendations. I, I'd say, um, you know, the easy one is making sure you have. Um, like a grab grab bars, right? In properly placed. And gosh, you know, I've been in many homes where um, I've seen either no grab bars with older adults or just poorly placed. You know, they kind of made it up as they go, or even the ones that's kind of suction on that. Yeah, good luck putting all your weight on that if you're really falling. That thing's gonna, you know, come right off the wall. So it's you know, it's something that it sounds like an easy fix, but you really need a professional, not just a therapist professional, to tell you where to put them. But also, you know, um, as somebody that knows what they're doing with installation, you know, that's a good thing. We've seen a lot of organizations up, and you'd have to look up locally who's in your area. But a lot of people focused on, um, you know, seniors adjusting their house to to really um, work well for them. And, you know, whether it's of course there's the senior living option, which is again best case scenario or or the best practice. But if you're trying to stay in your house a little longer, or you just need help with one room. Maybe you know there, there's there's a lot of people that focus on um, kind of handy men for for older folks is, is the way I think of it, and they, they can really help out, and they they have a specialty and you know things like grab bars and and things that can really help in the in the bathroom. Yeah, and if you are somebody looking at senior living, that's uh, absolutely something you want to make sure that that community has, and they should have that um, yeah. already in place, so you don't have to do anything but just walk in and start living. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, th those are some great tips. And, and then uh, before we, we wrap up here, that was very specific to the bathroom, but is there anything else you can suggest to anyone out there that can be done within five minutes that can, that can help somebody out immediately in preventing falls? Yeah, that's like I said, I mean, some of the stuff takes time. So, you know, you can't, you can't pick, there's no quick fix to strength training <laughs> and that takes time. So, you know, part of this is longer term, but, but I'd recommend from the home safety or environment set up if you're if you're not ready for senior living if that's not an option for you at the present moment for for whatever reason um it's again consult with somebody that can just give you some quick tips on where to put a grab bar where to put a railing i mean you'd be amazed my like i, I mentioned my parents they're they're 70 and 68 so they're they're doing pretty good but um they moved into a what is supposed to be a retirement community 55 and over well, the builder, had, there's two stairs to enter their home, which in its own right is kind of goofy, but they, there's, it wasn't, they weren't going to put a railing in there. And it's like, well, what are we doing here? If you want to age in place, like, you know, uh, right now, today, they might be able to go up, up those stairs, but, you know, I, I had to have a, an aftermarket railing put in, you know, so it's just not natural for people to have these things. And I wouldn't, you know, I'd say the quick fix is to get your house or your living environment set up for success. You may not use that grab bar 
99% of the time that you get in and out of the bath or up and down your stairs, um, but that one time you need it because you're about to fall, it, if it's properly installed in the right place and you know in the studs and kind of done the right way, um, you'll be thankful you, you did that ahead of time. So that's one of the quickest fixes is just, you know, I'd love everybody to walk up the stairs without holding on if they can, because that's great exercise. But that one time you need that railing, you want it to be properly installed and in the right place. So. Yeah, and uh, Leslie wanted to contribute and, and just basically reiterated everything that you said, get a cane, get a walker, get a shower seat, install handheld shower head. So Leslie's got a lot of um, um, <laughs> knowledge with this uh, particular topic get that device that helps you grab things from higher shelves so a yeah. lot of great tips here but uh again it all really comes down to it, it's it's uh multiple functions here so it's not just the function of your home but the function of your bodies as well yeah. so uh yeah. and that is um certainly the the message we have all heard loud and clear today so you are located in many places across the country where can people find you if they like you to come to their home or they want to come visit you sure that's a great question I, i'll uh, i'll go back to my screen here just for a quick minute um so everybody can see but here i have pulled up <clears throat> so as again um our organization our practice is called fox rehab so you know we were we were founded over 22 years ago and um, really with, with one physical therapist who, who kind of had a light bulb that, you know, older folks can do better. And he didn't want to start a whole brick and mortar clinic. He wanted to go to their home where they were having trouble and help them right there. Um, you know, and I think he, his story goes and early on, he said, well, if I could have three other people that do this with me, I'm successful, you know, but uh, as you can see here, he did a little better than that. So we, we have over 2000 therapists now and, and in, I believe 21 states, it's hard to keep up with, but 21 states and the District of Columbia. Um, and you can see here the map, you know, of course, very Northeast, um, Southeast focus. We're kind of slowly growing into the Midwest. Um, now in Texas, looking into the Southwest and West Coast. So um, if we're not there yet, we will be soon, I, I hope so. But, um, you know, like I said, although Fox is in 21 states, uh, physical therapists are in 50 and occupational therapists. So, you know, although I think personally we do it best, <laughs> you know, there's always an option. So you should always just, you know, talk to your physician, talk to, um, you know, somebody that, that knows resources, um, you know, now with the internet, you can, you can find somebody in your area that, that, uh, if you can't make it out to them, they can come to you. So. Yeah. And, and again, we love that certification, that geriatric certified specialist added yes. to, to the title already for you specifically. Um, so you you absolutely know um, uh, what our seniors need to thrive and succeed. Um, we thank you so much for your time and sharing your knowledge. Dr. Dan Quirk, thank you. Absolutely. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. All right, for everybody watching, uh, this webinar will be available uh, starting tomorrow. You can log on to www.seniorlivinglive.com. It will also be sent to the email you use to RSVP for this webinar. You can send that link out to all your friends, all your family members, uh, anybody you think who might need a little bit of help in preventing falls. So as always, we appreciate you watching Senior Living Live. You can catch more of our video content at www.seniorlivinglive.com, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We hope you have a great day, everybody.